Do I, do I feel really close to you guys? No, I'm not, because this is exactly where I stand on Sunday. And I have my little stand right back here, and I stand in front of it. So, um, tonight we have the great privilege to have the choir, the handbell choir from Cornerstone Bible Institute in Hot Springs, South Dakota. I don't know where that is. I mean, like, give me a geographical fix here. Southwest corner. Southwest corner. South, uh, almost an hour from Nebraska and Wyoming. Uh, an hour south of Mount Rushmore. They're there just to prove that God's everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to turn the service over to them. Let's just open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so very much for your presence. Thank you, Father, for traveling mercies that you've shown. We ask that you continue with them, Father. We thank you for the blessing of having these wonderful young people with us, Father. We just ask that you would shower your blessings upon them tonight. We just ask that you would be glorified in everything that we do. We honor you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Michelle Charles and Matt Parker are actually the ones that work with them in the music. 
preparing them for the time together. <coughs> Just trust that the Lord will bless and encourage your hearts as you listen to His word in music and song. As we listen to the words of this next song, these verses from Isaiah may very well come to mind. They speak of our Savior and of the great <coughs> sacrifice He made for us. The verses say, Surely He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. from Newton, Kansas, and I was a freshman this year. Hi, I'm John Arkins. I'm originally from Brazil, and I graduated. I'm Phil Hennessy from Bernie, California, and I was a junior. Hello, I'm James Bennett from Henderson, Nebraska, and I was a freshman this year. And I'm Bethany Franklin. I'm from Inman, Kansas, and I graduated this year. <laughs> I'm Patty Stefanik, and I'm from Grand Junction, Colorado, and I just finished my senior year. 
I'm Melissa Lerman, and I grew up in Brazil, and I just finished my freshman year. I'm Patrice Lerman, I grew up in Brazil, and I just graduated. I'm Alana Singer, I just finished my freshman year, and I'm from Sterling, Colorado. I'm Anna Schubert, I'm from Gordon, Nebraska, and I just finished my freshman year. I'm Becky DeFord from Ecolaca, Montana, and I was a junior. Hello, I'm Brittany Bennett from Henderson, Nebraska, and I was also a junior. My name is Sarah Henderson. I am from Atascadero, California, and I just finished my senior year. Hello, my name is Rachel Stanley. I was a senior as well, and I'm from Lopez Canyon, California. Good evening. My name is Abby Stepanek. I'm from Grand Junction, Colorado, and I was a senior. <laughs> For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The climax of God's love for us was seen in Christ's death on the cross and His resurrection. It is by His death and resurrection that we are able to have fellowship with God. <coughs>
With a world that is vying for our attention, it is vital that we keep our focus on God and His promises. He promises not to leave us alone, and He knows our struggles and our difficulties. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it.
very short stature, <laughs> but he longed to see Jesus. And in order to see Jesus, he had to climb a sycamore tree. Now, he probably did not think that the Lord would notice him, but the Lord did notice him. So for all you short people out there, you might not think you're noticed, but the Lord does notice you. Thank you. <laughs>
don't send me to Africa. Such irony would hardly be thought of as common in our churches today. But we all know that deep down inside of us, we all have this natural resistance to God's will in our lives. So I'd ask, as we sing the words these next two songs, that you would think to yourself, what should my response be to God's love for lost souls? Have not I commanded thee? 
Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I heard the voice of the Lord, Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Fear I, send me. freshman, junior, or senior, or had completed their senior year. Those that completed their senior year did graduate, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so they skipped their sophomore year just simply because we're a three-year school. Each student majors in Bible. And like a lot of Bible colleges, the students major in Bible, and then we have an emphasis instead of a minor. We don't offer a degree. Uh, we're not accredited. Uh, we do have several Bible colleges that work with us that will accept our credits. Our students can transfer there. And a couple of them can finish in a year, uh, in an additional year as well. The ministry emphasis that we have are missions, pastoral, discipleship counseling, and then also Christian education in the local church. And that's not preparation to teach in a school setting, but in Sunday school, vacation Bible school, junior church, that kind of thing. And then also we have added a Greek emphasis yeah, <clears throat> because of the, the number of courses that we offer in Greek. Uh, we have a unique situation. All of our teachers, all of our staff are missionary supported. We raise our own support. And function just as missionaries. It does two things. It brings a missionary into the classroom, and then it also provides Bible education for our students at a very reasonable cost. And if you want to make a comparison, people have asked if you want to make a comparison, it's about a third of what a Bible uh, college would be. And I think that's about right. I haven't really checked uh, all that Part of the uniqueness then also is because we are missionaries, uh, maybe we have a little bit more difficult time staffing our, our school, but there is this media device called Skype. So our Greek teacher actually is in Hillsdale, Oklahoma, pastors a church there, and teaches our Greek classes as well as Bible class. And then we have a teacher in Billings, Montana, and he teaches over Skype, Bible classes from there. And then this year, 
we have had a new member added to our Skype faculty. Uh, Dr. John Metzger is with Aerial Ministries. If you've heard anything of uh, Fruch uh, Arnold Fruchtenbaum, uh, the ministry that he is in involved with. And he's in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and teaches our Old Testament, some of our Old Testament subjects. Uh, this coming year, he's going to be teaching Genesis, Exodus, through Deuteronomy. Uh, has spent basically a lifetime studying the Old Testament scriptures, looking at Messiah in the scriptures. So uh, there are times when I've threatened to resign so I can go back to school, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and again, it's our goal to immerse each student in the Word of God, equipping them for their own life, to live their life for the Lord, and then preparing them to serve the Lord wherever He would send them, in whatever vocation He would send them into. We do have a display table that's set up over here. It's got some pictures going on the uh, screen there. Gives you an idea of our student body, also the area that we are, the campus, and that kind of thing. There are some business card information uh, cards that you can take they they give us give you the website as well as our email a phone number and, and uh, mailing address that kind of thing all of the literature that's on the table is also posted on our website our itinerary is posted on our website cornerstone cornerstonebibleinstitute.com and just help yourself to the literature that's on the table. There's a facts sheet there. Just tells a little bit about the school. Gives you an idea of who we are and where we stand concerning the Word of God. There's also a courier there, quarterly publication, and a sign up for that. You know, the mailing list that goes out uh, four times a year. And for those young people here that are interested in Bible school, we do have applications. They are also online. Uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, at Cornerstone and be able to guide you and prepare you for ministry. And I notice also that there's a number of young people here. And usually young people, sometimes older people too, are fascinated with the bells. <laughs> so what we will do is we'll have some of the students come up afterwards, after the concert. If you are interested in looking at the bells, possibly even playing the bells, have one of the students help you. They wear gloves for a reason. So please don't just pick them up and, and start handling them. They'd be more than happy to help you with those as well. Uh, visit with the students, ask them questions, find out about the school. The one song that was sung said, Your will cannot what, lead me where your grace will not keep me. Do we really believe that? You know, it's easy to believe that when things are going well. But it's not always so easy to believe that in the difficult times. I want us to look for just a few minutes, a couple of verses, in 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. <coughs> 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, looking primarily at verses 12 and 13. 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 12 and 13 says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. And I would love to spend time looking at the context of that passage of Scripture. I'll let you do that. Study it out. Look at the verses ahead, behind. Look at it in its context and see what the Lord is saying there. But the main thing I want to is don't be surprised. Just because you know you're where God wants you doesn't mean that everything in life is going to be easy. Why do Christians suffer? Well, one of the reasons is because they're Christians. And we live in a world where Satan is alive and well. And he opposes the work of God. So you can expect trials on that level. 
Think it not strange. I read a book recently. And in the book, it had to do with suffering and had to do with persecution around the world. It was put out by Voice of the Martyrs. <clears throat> a Russian pastor said, Persecution is like the sun coming up in the morning. It's expected. Think about it. Don't think it's strange concerning the difficulty, the fiery trial, which is to try you. <clears throat> they are simply a part of God's growth process in our lives. These trials, according to the Scripture, are cause for rejoicing. How many of us rejoice? Or how many of us, us, today, I'm including myself, how many of us kind of murmur and complain when things don't go our way? When little things in life affect us negatively? He said suffering is to be expected. We are to rejoice in it because we have the privilege of suffering with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now there's a whole other study that looks at right suffering and wrong suffering. Okay? The right suffering is for Jesus' sake. Wrong suffering is because I've sinned, I've done wrong, I am reaping the fruit of my own dumb choices. <coughs> or wrong choices. He said, that's not cause for rejoicing. That's cause for correction. Make sure that we're suffering for the right reasons. One other thing that this book that I read concerning the persecuted church. And think about this. We have the privilege of having a Bible school where students can come. We never worry about being interrupted by the government, by the authorities, by anything like that. A man interviewed Chinese pastors <coughs> in the house church movement. They said, prison is our seminary. That's where we learn to walk with God. If a pastor in the United States goes to prison because of what he's preaching, they say, I wonder what he said is wrong. Maybe you just stay with the Word of God. God's grace is sufficient for our every need. It is sufficient. We just simply must trust Him. We must trust His leading in our lives as well. I trust that the Lord will challenge our hearts as a choir, or as a handout choir, actually comes and continues to minister to us in music as well. <clears throat>
Paul prays in Ephesians 3, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge.
sound. These words were written by John Newton, a man who understood the grace of God in his life. At the end of his life, he said, I do not remember many things, but two things I remember very clearly. Number one, I am a great sinner. And number two, Christ is a great Savior. May we thank and praise God for his amazing grace that has saved us and for his amazing grace that leads us safely home.
concludes our presentation for you this evening. We'd like to thank you so very much for allowing us the opportunity to minister and worship God in song with you this evening. We might humbly ask that you would keep us in your prayers as we continue our spring choir tour. We're going to be headed to Idaho tomorrow and then later on up to Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and then we'll end up in Wyoming at the end of the month. So um, just pray that the word of God will go forth for the sake of his name. Thank you very much again. God bless you all. Okay.